Hello everyone, my name is Nazani Montazeri from Team Iran. The question that I want to perform for you right now is question number five, Sweet Mirage. So here you can see the statement of the question. The question says there is a particular name given to a particular form of a mirage, which is named Photomorgana. You can see the exact effect by shining a laser beam through a graded index medium. The question is asking us to investigate the phenomenon. So for the phenomenon, we should know what is a superior mirage and refractive index. And the question is asking us to investigate the phenomenon. So let's move on to, to the introduction and understand what the question is exactly asking us. So right now I want to clearize the question. Here you can see the picture of Photomorgana Mirage. As you can see here, some people see some ships are floating over the water. This is what we know as Photomorgana. And you can see sh me shining a laser beam through a graded index medium. The question says if you shine a laser beam through this graded index medium, you can see the laser beam is bending. And we have to investigate the phenomenon and why is this laser beam is bending and how these two are related to each other. So let's move on to the quality theory. So I think the first thing first that is required in order to be clearized is to know what is refractive index. Because the question has mentioned that we have a refractive index gradient, so we should know what is refractive index. Refractive index is the ratio of the speed of light in the vacuum to the speed of light in the medium that you're using. And we all know some basic laws of, uh, laws of optic. Whenever light is going from one medium from one with one specific refractive index to the other medium with a different refractive index, we would see a refraction. So we have an initial angle and a refraction angle. And in order to relate these two angles, we use a law which is named Snell's law. You obviously can see the formula here. Theta 1 is actually the initial angle, theta 2 is the refraction angle, n2 and n1 are the refractive indexes in the second medium and the first medium. We want m2 are the velocity of the light in the first medium and the second medium. Imagine that the actually light is moving from one medium to the other medium with a higher refractive index. So n2 is bigger than n1 according to what I told you. So obviously according to the Snell's law, sine theta 1 will be bigger than sine theta 2. And we all know theta 1 and theta 2 are between 0 and 90 degrees. So definitely theta 1 will be bigger than theta 2. So if the light goes from one medium to a medium with a higher refractive index, the light would tend to get closer to the normal. I'm going to use this definition in order to uh, actually describe why is the bending downward. So right now we know what happens to light when it's moving between two different areas. Imagine that we have more than two different mediums. Imagine that we have five different mediums. As you can see here, the refractive index are, are increasing as we're moving downward. So when the light enters the first medium, because of the change in refractive index, we would have a refraction. Again, when it's moving from the second medium to the third medium, we would have a refraction. And we have some continuous refractions according to the continuous changes in refractive index. So this continuous refractions makes us see that the light is bending. The light is not, not actually bending. It's some uh, sort of like continuous uh, refractions that we see, which makes us see the light is bending. So we know what happens to light when it's moving between more than two mediums. Imagine that we have uh, five different mediums with five different densities. We want to see is density related to refractive index or not. So as you obviously can see here, we have increased the refractive indexes. So if you do the same experiments, you would observe the same things that happened in the previous slide, which shows us that density is definitely related to the refractive index. You would exactly see that we have some actually refractions, which makes, uh, which actually tells us that changes in densities cause a change in refractive index, as you obviously can see here. So uh, right now we all know the basic things that are uh, required in order to answer the question. Let's move on to the main theory. In order to make a refractive index gradient, we have some sugar. We pour the sugar down in the aquarium. So we add a water little by little without making a solution. We don't disturb anything. We just let the solution be there for one day so that it get, gets properly solved without us trying to solve it. So definitely the amount of sugar that is solved in the down layers is very much more than the amount of sugar which is solved in the higher layers. So the density of the down layers will be more than the density of the higher layers. So definitely according to the theory that we mentioned, the refractive index would increase as we're moving downward because the density is uh, increasing. So uh, actually this changes in refractive indexes when the light enters this medium. It has some continuous refractions according to the continuous changes of refractive indexes, which makes us see the light is bending, as I uh, mentioned earlier. So right now we know why does the light bend, but how is it related to photomorgana mirage? So I'm going to explain what is photomorgana mirage for you right now. In some days the air which is close to the sea gets cold, and as you're moving upward the temperature would increase step by step. And the only temperature is related to density. As the temperature is increasing when we're moving upward, the density would decrease and according to the laws that I told you, the refractive index would decrease as well. So again, in this case, we would have a refractive index gradient, and when the light enters this refractive index gradient, it would uh, actually refract gradually, and we would see a bending. So this bending light actually touches our eye, so you would see actually the object higher than the real actually object that you're observing. And actually, the experiments that we did was somehow the simulation of the photomorgana mirage, and in this experiment, in, uh, the fluid that we had was actually uh, some sort of like a liquid with refractive index, and we 
could, ob uh, we could obviously observe the pattern of the movement of our laser beam. So uh, right now we know, and we have two different types of mirages, which photomorgan is a superior mirage. I don't want to insist on inferior mirages because um, it's not asking the question. So here you can see some main parameters, like the refractive index could be effective on the amount of bending, the initial angle could be effective, height of the fluid, concentration, and these two parameters that I'm showing you right now, I haven't investigated them, but they can be effective. The wavelength of the laser beam and the fluid's temperature. So let's move on to the quantitative theory. We all know in order to solve optic problems, we have two different ways. We can use geometrical optics and ray theory, or we can use Maxwell equations and wave theory. So I uh, prefer to use Snell's land uh, geometrical optics in my question, because as long as you can solve your question with geometrical optics, I think there is no need to get involved with the wave theory. And because uh, actually uh, in our question, uh, there is no uh, some sort of like parosh or anything. So definitely the ray theory and wave theory would correspond to each other. And um, I think geometrical theory is enough in order to solve our question. So let's move on to the main theory and our quantitative theory. So as you can see here, we wanted to see if we can understand the pattern of the movements of our laser beam. We wanted to see if we can relate the coordinates of the laser beam, we, if we, we wanted to have a relation between x, uh, x and y. And we considered that actually here is n0. As you can see here, we consider that n and the height, refractive index and the height, they have a linear relationship. So when n is equal to a y plus b, definitely. And from the Snell's law, we know this law, n sine theta is equal to n0 sine theta 0. So uh, n, n0 sine theta 0 is a constant number. Actually, we have the number right here. So we can name it as c. And the n, you can use this, actually replace this in the formula. And according to some uh, geometrical stuff, you can uh, use tangent theta instead of using the sinus thing. And uh, we uh, actually, uh, x prime is equal to the tangent of the te theta. And as you can see here in the geometrical thing, sine of, uh, tangent of the theta, would be the ratio of dx to dy, which x prime is equal to the dx to dy, obviously. So we did some actually shortening in our formulas. We wanted to have the x prime on one side of the equation. So this is what you can see. So we replace dx to dy instead of x prime. We would have this form of the equation. We wanted to integrate two parts, but we should have a constant number, which is differential of this actually um, this uh, variable. So we added uh, some sort of like shortening question. And the last uh, thing that we had, uh, the relation between x and y, is this, as you can see here. So we can somehow predict the pattern of the movement of our laser beam. So this was uh, some sort of like our quantitative theory, and we can understand how is the laser beam moving. So let's move on to our main parameters and investigate them. I think height and the refractive index, they have the same relationship because if you increase the height, the light would move uh, through more medium, so we would have more refractions and more amount of bending. If you increase the dense, uh, if you increase the concentration, I think again the bending would increase as well because concentration has the same and uh, actually relation with the refractive index. I think if you increase the theta of imitation, definitely the uh, light would move through more medium, so we would have more refractions and more bending. And delta n is uh, definitely according, uh, uh, related to the amount of bending. So let's move on to experiments. You can see our experimental setup. We have a container, we have a laser beam, green laser beam, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we experimented uh, actually uh, our setup. So you can see we have used image processing and using trackers, we could understand the pattern of the movement of our uh, somehow like laser beam. So in the right thing that you can see here, we have 200 grams of sugar. In the left chart, you can see we have 100 grams of sugar. So the amount of bending in the right chart is more, which completely shows us that if you increase the amount of sugar, the refractive index and the amount of bending would increase as well. So the other chart is actually by using image processing, we wanted to see how is initial angle related to the amount of bending. We theoretically explained that. But as you obviously can see here, as we've increased the uh, initial angle, the amount of bending increased as well. This is our experimental results. And the other thing, uh, actually, that we did, we wanted to see how is refractive index related to the amount of sugar that we solve. How is refractive index uh, related to the concentration? So we used uh, seven different amounts of sugar. We solved them, and we calculated the refractive index by using Snell's law. We had the initial angle, which is the theta one, and we had the refractive index of the air. We, had, uh, we could somehow calculate the theta two by using image processing and tracker, and we we could somehow calculate N2, which is the refractive index of the second medium, by the way that I told you. So I uh, somehow like calculated the refractive indexes, and you obviously can see, as you're increasing the amount of sugar, the refractive index is increasing as well. And you can see, actually, we have a Y variable here. Y is actually the, di the distance uh, of the last point of the laser beam to the bottom of the container. If this variable decreases, obviously the amount of bending would increase. So as we can see here, as we have increased the refractive index, the ratio of Y to X has decreased, which shows us that if you increase the refractive index, the amount of bending would obviously increase. And here you can see my data and results. And let's move on to the conclusion part.
Uh, for concluding the whole remark remarks, we have Snell's law and the refraction and the main theory in the first part. We explained why does the spending happens and uh, we explained the whole phenomenon by using Snell's law, etc. In the second part, uh, we had quantitative theory. We used the Snell's law in order to use wave, uh, ex in actually instead of using wave theory, we used ray theory because of the uh, explanations that I gave you. And obviously, the next part that we did was doing some experiments according to some variables, as I mentioned earlier, like the angle of imitation, which had the same relation with the n, with the high of the fluid which had the same relation with the n and uh, the other thing that we changed was refractive indexes and I mentioned how did I calculate the refractive index as well and then we comp uh, compared our experiments versus theory and definitely they both corresponded to each other and uh, thank you for your attention.